Welcome to Sergey's Chemistry. Today we are looking at tests for copper 2 ions. Here on the background is copper 2 sulfate crystals. Sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide forms precipitates with most transition metals. Colored precipitates of hydroxide of transition metals. Here we use copper 2 sulfate for testing and nickel 2 sulfate as a control. Let's see what happens on addition of sodium hydroxide. Nothing clearly visible in case of nickel, it's white greenish precipitate. But in case of copper 2, gelatinous blue precipitate. Positive result for copper 2 ions presence on addition of sodium hydroxide. Copper 2 ions form insoluble copper 2 hydroxide in alkaline medium. An addition of acid, we reverse the process. Hydrogen ions from acid form water reacting with hydroxide ions and the aqueous copper 2 ions are back again. Ammonia is an alkaline gas forming alkaline water solution and also it can form complexes with transition metals. So let's see which complexes it forms with copper 2 ions. Ammonia water solution to nickel. Concentration is low, so nothing is clearly seen, but it actually turns a little bit violet. In case of copper 2, it's much clearer, deep blue solution of complex of copper 2 and ammonia. On the borderline, you can see precipitate of copper 2 hydroxide, which disappears on shaking. Now we have tetraamine diaqua copper 2 deep blue solution. The same on the micro scale. It runs around re establishing hydrogen bonds. Potassium ferrocyanide. Another complex formation. We use same pair nickel to sulfate, copper to sulfate, and potassium ferrocyanide or potassium hexacyanoferrate 2 in UPAC nomenclature. Our ions here to form complex is iron 2 surrounded by 6 cyanide ions. In case of copper 2, let's see what happens. Formation of chocolate brown precipitate. Positive result for copper 2 ions in addition of potassium ferrocyanide. It's copper 2 ferrocyanide precipitate, chocolate brown. On a micro scale, this looks like a catastrophe on some planet. Or if the droplets are flat, chocolate brown precipitate looks like a remnant of some supernova explosion. Another test, potassium iodide. Here we use the ability of copper 2 ions to oxidize other substances. Copper 2 is not very strong oxidizing agent, but it's stronger than nickel 2, for example. Potassium iodide added to nickel, nothing visibly happens. In case of copper 2, brown color is formed. Its appearance of molecular iodine, iodide ions are oxidized to iodine. And another thing, white precipitate. White precipitate is copper 1 iodide, which is insoluble. You have to wait a little for this precipitate to settle, then you see it clearly. Precipitate is necessary because iron 3, for example, also oxidizes potassium iodide to iodine, but it doesn't form white precipitate here on the micro scale. And the addition of starch just confirms that iodine is formed indeed blue solution. Now, the most direct test for the presence of copper 2 ions is just to get copper metal out of them. And for that, we use iron filings here. Uh, iron metal is above copper in reactivity series, so it is displacing copper 2 ions from solution. Iron atoms are oxidized and copper 2 ions are reduced into copper metal. So, formation of brown or pink metal, positive result for copper 2 ions on addition of iron filings. Let's run 
all five tests for copper in fast sequence. We need a bit higher concentration for potassium iodide test, so I don't add so much water, otherwise the reaction doesn't run. Sodium hydroxide, blue precipitate of copper to hydroxide. Ammonia, deep blue solution of tetraamine diaqua copper 2. Potassium ferrocyanide, chocolate brown precipitate of copper 2 ferrocyanide. And potassium iodide, brown solution with white precipitate of copper 1 iodide. Brown color is due to iodine presence. And the last one, addition of iron filings, formation of metallic copper. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.